Okay, this one um, is going to be uh, much less focused on the Catholic Church. This is something that Chance and I actually talked about some time ago. Um, and, and so we know there are Ten Commandments, but which are the Ten Commandments? And, and uh, that turns out to be a much bigger question than, than you might think it is. Um, and the Bible is very clear on that idea that there are Ten Commandments, uh, but it doesn't spell that out. It doesn't say this is the first commandment, this is the second, this is the third. And, and you would think that um, people in Christianity or even in Judaism would have been able to come up with um, a, a, a definition of what those Ten Commandments were, um, but that hasn't happened over time. So we're going to look at that. Um, and so the, the Bible tells us two things very clearly. It says that there are Ten Commandments and it says there are two tablets, but it doesn't tell, you, uh, tell us, as I said, which is the first, second, and third of those commandments. And, and it doesn't say what things, which of those commandments are written on which tablets. And, and there's no agreement on this. Um, it, the, because the Bible is silent on that, um, you'd think that people could understand it because we're going to talk about all the different clues that, that God put in there to help us to understand it. Um, but nonetheless, there is no agreement on this. And, and so we ask, well, why didn't God just go ahead and tell us everything about it? And this comes back to something I've said many times before, is that God wants us to search for things. He, he doesn't want us to just tell us things. He wants us to have a heart that will go out and search to try to understand these things. And in this case, when you do understand it, there's a much deeper understanding of the commandments and, and what they are about and, and uh, more than that. And I, I talked about that when we did, I think it was like two years ago, we, we did a big study uh, many weeks on the Ten Commandments. And, um, and, and so there's a, a lot of depth in there if you want to dig into it. And God has made it that way so that there is a reward at the end. If you dig into it, you will find this reward. Um, but lots of people haven't dug into it, and they've come up with their own ideas about these things, and they've gotten them wrong. And so the, the real problem is that it's not obvious which commandment is the first, second, and third. Um, there's nothing in the Bible that says that. It just says there are ten. And so so people have been breaking the, the text of the Bible uh, that the, the talks about these ten commandments uh, into those ten in different ways. And, and so there are kind of two common ways we're going to look at, at all of these. There are two common ways, and they're both wrong. Um, they're they're uh, wrong for the same reason, and we'll see that. And that reason really should be obvious to any person who looks at it. You should be able to say, well, no, I can see what you've done wrong here. You, you've split this commandment into another, into two of them. Um, and um, you'd think that that would be an obvious thing, but apparently it isn't that obvious. Um, and, and so, but there's also an uncommon way, and that is the correct way, and that's the one that not many, many people know about. And it does actually matter. If, uh, if you want to get into the depth of understanding those commandments, you need to get this part right. You need to get uh, which commandments are which and which uh, tablets they're on. So the Bible, as I said, talks about two tablets as well as those Ten Commandments. And, and the Bible shows us by, by, once we read the Ten Commandments, we can say, oh yeah, the, these first commandments here are plainly about our relationship with God. And, and Jesus talked about that, and there are verses from the Old Testament that he quoted, and it, and it says, love the Lord your God, and it continues on uh, after that. And, and, and then when we look at the text of the commandments, we say, okay, these last commandments are definitely about our relationship with other people, with mankind. And, and that goes along with what Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So um, we, we can see by a very simple analysis that the Ten Commandments, there are different kinds in there. Some of them are focused on our relationship with God. Some are focused on our relationship with man. Um, but the, which ones are which is uh, as unclear as which commandments are which. And, and so there are different breakdowns for that. The Jews say that there are five commandments on each tablet. And, and that kind of makes a certain amount of sense. Um, but the Catholics say that there are three on one tablet. There are three on the relationship with God tablet and seven that are on the relationship with man tablet. And the Protestants say that there are four on the relationship with God tablet and six on the relationship with man tablet. So these three groups have three completely different ideas about um, where these commandments uh, should go, or which tablet they belong on. So we're going to deal, deal with all of that here together. And the, the problem that everybody is having that's causing this is that if you go into the text of the Ten Commandments, uh, like Exodus 20, and, and, and you study that and, and you say, okay, I'm going to sit down here and, and think this through and, and break these down into, the, into those Ten Commandments. And if you go into it thinking like a man, you will come up with nine commandments. And, and uh, there's only one group who's gone in and done the study and said, okay, here's the, here's the ten. And all the others have ignored that group. And, and so when you go into it just naturally uh, thinking like a man, you're going to come up with nine. 
And so when you've got nine, you say, well, the Bible says there's 10, so I need to find some way to get a 10th one out of that. And, and so th this is largely going to be a study of how people have tried to get the 10th commandment to come out of those nine. And, and so, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier, why can't we get the 10 commandments correct? You'd think that that's a very basic fundamental thing. Why is it that the, the church can't even agree and get the right answer on, on the 10 commandments? Um, and, and I think the reason really comes from the weakness that is in the church. The church tends to value and give authority to good-looking, well-spoken, dynamic people. And, and um, we're, as people, we're just naturally attracted to those kind of things. And those are the people we tend to value their opinions and, and give authority to them. And, and we, we can't see that they're strong in the spirit. We can't see that sort of thing. And so that's not a value that we, we use to choose people. And we tend to fall back on only what their physical values are. And so I think the problem is that there are a lot of people in the upper levels of the church who are not strong in the spirit and, and, and they are there for other reasons. And, and because of that, there are people who were um, good leaders, good everything else, but they're not really strong in the spirit and they aren't able to see what's in the Ten Commandments and they get it wrong. And so the rest of this study is going to look at the, the ways that people have been dealing with this Nine Commandments problem. And, and, and uh, as I said before, one of those ways is to take one of the commandments and split it into two and say, no, this isn't really one commandment, it's actually two. And there's different ways to do that. We'll look at that. And, and another way, a novel way, is to add a new commandment to fill in that blank spot that you've got and so you can get up to the number of 10. And, and so these are all the things we'll be looking at. So we're going to be looking at a number of different sources for that, those breakdowns of the Ten Commandments. One comes from what's called the LXX. Now, that's a translation from the Hebrew into Greek that was done uh, two or three hundred years before Jesus' time. And um, it's, a, it's a standard for a lot of Greek uh, scholarship um, and uh, well-established. And so somewhere in the LXX, there is a list of what it believes the Ten Commandments are. And another source is Philo. Philo was a Jew in Egypt who did some writing on that. He had some very different ideas on, on how the Ten Commandments should be broken down. Um, and then um, under in the Reformation, um, Calvin, the Reformed uh, church that he created, they have a different idea as well. And we can't see so much of that until we get to the later five, but we'll see more of that. And then there's the Talmud. The Talmud is writings of rabbis. And so in the Talmud, there are some writings of rabbis. And, and one of them has gone to the trouble to say, here are the Ten Commandments. This is how they should be broken down. And, and this is the right source. These, these are the people who have it right. And then on the other side, now this is in kind of in agreement with the Protestant view, uh, not just uh, Calvinism, but the Protestant view kind of agrees with what you'll see here. Um, less so Philo. Um, and, and over here, you're, you're going to see the Samaritan Church. Now, the Samaritan Church is a, is a Jewish church that broke off from Judaism quite a long time ago. They created their own church. And so it's kind of a Jewish church, but they've, they've changed some things, some very significant things in their doctrine. And, and they really aren't a Jewish church anymore. And, and we'll see some of that in, in uh, how they understand things as well later on with the other five commandments. Augustine was one of the first uh, major writers inside of the Catholic Church. And so he, he did a breakdown of that. And he said, here's the, the, how the Ten Commandments should be broken down. And that was adopted by the Catholic Church, more or less. And Luther, who came out of the Catholic Church, continued that on into the Lutheran Church. So that's all the different groups that are uh, producing different versions of how the Ten Commandments should be broken down. And, and a, a lot of this is going to hinge on the very first uh, words from Exodus. And, and it says, I am the Lord thy God, and it continues on from there. Um, and most churches, now the, uh, the Catholic Church says that, that this is part of the first commandment. And, and it says, it really, it's a preamble. So it says, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shall not make any uh, unto thee any graven image. So um, the Catholic Church uh, is in agreement on that. They say that that is all one commandment. And you can kind of see that it's sort of related. But when you really think about it, it it's not related correctly. And this is talking about who is God. And these two are talking about worshiping God. So they're, they're not about the same thing. But nonetheless, um, the Catholic Church treats it that way. These other authors just see it as a preamble generally to all of the Ten Commandments, and they don't really think it's of any value. It doesn't, it's not one of the commandments, and it doesn't, it doesn't say anything of value. Um, the Reformists and, and the Protestants generally also say, okay, yes, that is a preamble. It, it's the kind of introduction to the first commandment, 
but notice what's different here. These groups over here have split this commandment. Um, when you think about what these are about, these are about worshiping other gods, worshiping graven images and other gods. And, and they say, no, this is the first commandment and the second commandment. And the reason they're doing that is that this is their way of getting 10 commandments from the nine that they can see. And, 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 and uh, so um, that gives them five coming out of this first five set, and then they get five from the last five, which are easy to pick out, and that gives them the 10. But what you see here is that the Catholic Church and others related to it um, say, no, this, this is all one commandment. And they're right about this. This is one commandment. It's about worshiping other things than God. And, and so they're correct about that. But the result of that is that they only have four commandments coming out of the first five. And, and so now they have to get six commandments to come out of the, the next five. And that's a struggle. We'll see how they deal with that. So we have right, right away, we see that there are two different ways to, to do things. Uh, one, one group is breaking this, what is obviously one commandment, um, because it's on that same topic. Uh, they're breaking it into two so they can get the 10 to come out. And, and this group is, is saying, no, it's all one commandment, obviously so, and, and, um, and they get the 10th commandment a different way. But the Talmud, which is the one that is correct, says the, the first one is the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God is a commandment. And the reason that people don't see that is it doesn't sound like the other commandments. It doesn't say thou shalt or thou shalt not. It, it says, um, I am the Lord thy God, and that doesn't sound like one of the other commandments. But it's not that different from some of the others. This one says, remember the Sabbath day um, and honor thy father. So it's not thou shalt not and thou shalt all the time. Um, and, and it makes sense also that this is the first commandment um, because it is, um, when you think about it, I am the Lord thy God, your God. And, and so it's, it's God talking to somebody saying, I'm your God. And so that requires a response from who, whomever he's saying that to. And, and your response is one of two things. It's either yes, sir, I agree, or it's no, thank you, I don't want to have anything to do with you. And, and so it really is um, a commandment about faith. Uh, this is the beginning of the Ten Commandments. It is a, a commandment about, do you accept God for what he is? Is he your Lord? Is he your God? Um, and, and so it's, it's really the central commandment. Um, once you see that, you also see that all of the other commandments are, are, are hinging on this one. If, if you don't accept the Lord as your God, then none of these other commandments make anything for you. You can follow them as much as you want, but if you've rejected God, then they count for nothing for you. Um, you can live a good life by, by following them, but uh, God is not your God, he's your enemy, and, and he doesn't care that you've followed all these commandments well. There's no reward for you. And then so the, the Talmud breaks it down very differently here. They, they say that is the first commandment, and, and that makes sense once you do the big study that we did before. Um, because it lines up the thing, the other commandments correctly with uh, this one. So it says that's the first commandment. It says these are indeed the, the same commandment. These two verses here are the same commandment. They're, it's talking about the same principle. It's about uh, worshiping things other than God. And, and so um, after that, they get, they get to the same point of having five coming out of the first set of five. So so they haven't had to stretch anything. They've just recognized that this is one of the commandments. So we, we see right here three different ways of, of doing the breakdown. This one is to, to break one of the commandments into two. This one, uh, they don't break that commandment into two. They're going to fix that in later on. And the Talmud says, well, we don't have to break this into two. It's one commandment you've just forgotten and didn't realize that this one is a commandment as well. Okay, so going down to the last five. This gets broken up in a lot of different ways and, um, and necessarily so to make things work out. The standard Protestant view lines up with the LXX. So it says um, six, seven, eight, nine, those are those commandments. And all of this stuff here on coveting, this is all a set of verses that talk about coveting. That is all about the same topic and it's all uh, one commandment. And so because they, they got five by splitting a verse, or, uh, splitting a commandment earlier, they're able to just count through this in, in normal succession and say, there, now we have 10. Now, Philo, for reasons I, I don't fully understand, I only did a little bit of reading on it, decided that, um, that there are 10 this way, but they needed to be reordered. So he said, this should really be the sixth commandment, this should be the seventh commandment, this should be the eighth commandment. Um, nobody accepts that. Nonetheless, he seemed to be a significant person in his time, and so there's a record of what he said. Um, the, the Reformed, the Calvinists are much like the Protestants and therefore like the LXX, and so they come to 10 
in what would be a very normal way for those last uh, five commandments. And, and the Talmud as well, because it's already got its five by getting the correct first uh, commandment. It didn't have to split a commandment. Um, and the Samaritans, now this is where the Samaritans go in a strange way. They, they go five, six, seven, eight, nine. And, and remember, they were short because they, they weren't counting the first commandment. And um, like the Roman Catholic Church does. And what they did was they threw in a brand new 10th commandment. Um, they have their translation of the uh, Old Testament is a little bit different. And, and they say that these verses that come later on in the Old Testament are actually the 10th commandment. And, and so they're saying that the, the 10 commandments that God gave at Mount Sinai didn't include all 10. There's a 10th one that is elsewhere in the Bible. And, and this is it. Nobody else agrees with that that I know of. Now, Augustine, remember that Augustine, the Catholic Church and, and Lutheran churches all started out short. They only had four commandments from the last five. So they, they count out normally. These are obviously uh, thou shalt not kill, that's commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery, that's commandment. And so they agree on all that. But when they get down to the, the uh, covet commandment, commandment verses, um, they break them down in different ways. They have to get two out of that. They have to split this co uh, coveting thing into two to get their number up to ten. And, and so they do it in different ways. Uh, Augustine says that this part here is the ninth commandment, and this verse here and, and this verse here uh, make up the tenth commandment. And the reason he does that is that these verses here are coming from um, Exodus 20, but in the Deuteronomy 5 version of this, these words are ordered in a little different way. And, and so he's using the Deuteronomy 5 version, and he says um, this one should be the ninth, and, and these two should be the tenth. And the Catholic Church uh, falls in line with what he says. But Luther says, no, that's not right. He, he's using the Exodus 20 verses. And he says, uh, no, this, this one here is the ninth, and these are the tenths. But it's that same false idea. This is all about coveting. It's, it, the general principle is coveting, and, and it's not about anything else. Uh, and so it's not about things. Um, coveting is not about your neighbor's house or your neighbor's wife or all of these other things. Coveting is about what's inside of you, a flaw inside of you that you need to address. It, it's a, a, an unhappiness with who you are that makes you always desire other people's things. And, and uh, so they, you can see that there are different ways of breaking up this uh, covet commandment, but they need to break it up, else, otherwise they can't get to the number 10 that they're looking for. Okay, any questions on that? Yeah, just a comment. So when I was Lutheran for years, I thought there might be something wrong with the way they were setting it up. So I just read it and I said, what makes the most sense to me without even knowing that it was what you're talking about? I see that the way I've always done it up until today is exactly like Reformed Calvinism. Mm -hmm. the, the first two I thought is, the first, you know, so which which is the closest one to the Talmud that you're talking about, the Reform Council. So yeah, up until this morning, even I was doing it just on my own as Reform Calvin, but I see the Talmud why that makes sense. I see that now. Yeah, and I did the same thing um, when I was uh, first coming up uh, after I'd come back to the faith. Um, uh, the pastor of the church that I was with at that time did a study on the Ten Commandments in, in a Bible study series, and. Uh, I did the same thing. I said, you can't split that commandment up like that. That's just about one thing. And, and But nonetheless, I, I could only see nine. I couldn't say, well, where's, where's that tenth one coming from? I don't see how it makes any sense that way. And, and yeah, uh, that as I said, when you go into it without having um, enough spirit uh, guidance in, into it, you're going to come up with a number nine, and you're going to miss what the tenth one is. Actually, miss the first one. 